about this guy who's out in the wilderness crying, making the paths of the Lord straight, and he wore camel's hair and a big leather belt, and he ate bugs and honey. And then when he sees certain people coming up to be baptized, he says to them, calls them a brood of vipers, and he asks them who told them to come to have this done. Right? And he talks about the person who's coming, right? I baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to, to carry his sandals. And because he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, to this point in the reading, I'm not feeling really good about any of this, really. I mean, you know, am I part of this brood of vipers? Do I not understand why I'm here and why I'm coming or why I'm, I'm even doing this? Which would lead to the question of, why are you here this morning? Because, I, I heard, because my parents made me be here. Oh, that's what I heard. I'm half deaf, but, right? Why are you here? Why is it important for us to be here? Why is it important for us to hear these lessons and to understand what we've been taught? Why is it important for us to understand who Jesus is? And at the end here we get that Jesus was baptized by John. And what did happen right before that? He went to John and John said, You're coming to me to be baptized and this should be the other way around, Jesus. You're the one that should be baptizing me, not me baptizing you. But Jesus says to him, We have to do this now. So that we can fulfill all righteousness. Right? Jesus came to John and said, John, I need you to baptize me. And John said, no, I can't do it. It's not the way it's supposed to work. And Jesus said, hold on just a second. I know how this is supposed to work. It works the way that I need it to. Not the way that you want it to. Okay? Right? about what God is doing here. And as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. And in Matthew this morning, we hear it say that God spoke to the collected crowd and said, this is my son, right? This is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. You are my child, my beloved. In you, I am well pleased. Right? Why that candle's lit over there? Because we remember this morning the baptism of Jesus. And how Jesus came to fulfill all righteousness and did things in a way that we don't always understand. Did things in a way that don't absolutely make sense to us. Right? We think we know how this is all going to work and how everything's going to play out. And we, and we have life all set out in advance we have the plans all made and everything's going to happen the way that I've set them out. And how many times does that happen? Has anybody ever had that happen? Because if you do, I want to talk to you because I want to know how you do it. <laughs> because I've never had that happen. Right? Things normally don't go the way that I've planned them. And you know what I find out in the end? That it's usually a lot better that things didn't happen the way that I thought that they should. Because somebody greater than me is in control of all of this. And so that's Jesus coming to you this morning and saying, Bruce, Tracy, Nelda, Nick, Lynn, Mark, Nancy, I need you to baptize me. What would you do if Jesus came to you and said, I want you to baptize? I 
I would be shaking more than I am right now. So you can't see that because I stand up here every morning. You think, you think I'm, I'm really good at this and I stand up here every Sunday morning and I'm not nervous about being in front of you all. But every Sunday morning I'm nervous to stand up here because I'm proclaiming God's love to you as a group of gathered people here. And if that doesn't make somebody shake in their boots, I don't know what could. Right? We'd be shaking if Jesus came to us and said, I want you to baptize me. I need you to do this for me. And we would all say, no, God, that's not the way that this works. And Jesus would look at us just as he looked at John and said, I need you to do this so that we can fulfill all righteousness. Because I understand how this is supposed to work. And sometimes it's not going to match up with the way that you think that it should go. Right? A lot of things have happened here over the past eight months that have not gone the way a lot of people wanted them to go. Right? This morning we're going to take a step in the right direction, I believe. Council has been talking a long time about everything that has happened here. And this morning we're taking a survey. You came, you came to worship this morning to worship. You didn't know you were going to have to take a test. But here in a moment, our ushers are going to pass out to you a, a survey, a test. And here's the rules for this test. Now, there are some visitors here this morning, and we're glad that you're here. We hope that this doesn't deter you from visiting with us again. But... Everyone who is here that can read and understand what is written on the paper needs to fill out one of these forms. And if you guys want to go ahead and start passing them out. Everyone who can understand the questions written on the page by themselves needs to fill out one of these forms. We're going to take about 10 minutes to fill these out right now. Please don't fold them. Please don't write on them in any fashion. Fill in the little bubbles. It's just like an old Scantron from school. It's all good. So there are pencils in the pews. If there's not enough, we've got some that will come around. But this morning, shh, hang on, I'm still talking. I'm wrapping up here, but I want us to take this time, right? God calls us to do things sometimes that we don't understand. And this study is a way for us to comprehend where we're at as a congregation right now and probably where some of us are individually right now. And we're going to get all this information back as a, con as a council and then we're going to figure out how we're moving forward. God is calling us in new and vital ways and to do great things in this community. And this is our first step as a congregation to help us figure out where we're at and where we're headed. So let's do this together. And know that God is always calling us to do the things that we may not want to do. But it will turn out the way that he needs it to in the end.